A variable represents a numerical value. If we have a fraction, let's say 5 divided by x, we can divide by any value except for 0. So we have to put a restriction on that variable where we say x, though it represents any numerical value, it cannot equal 0. When COVID-19 was prevalent, provinces placed restrictions on the number of people who could gather together. In math, we can restrict variables to certain numbers. When you state a restriction on a variable, you identify the values of that variable that make that expression a real number. The square root of a negative number is not a real number. If we have a radical, let's say the square root of x, we know that we can take the square root of any value except for a negative number. So we have to put a restriction on that variable and say x has to be positive. It can equal 0, the square root of 0 is just 0, or it has to be greater than 0. So it has to be a positive value or 0 in order to take the square root of it. We can also say that x is an element of the real number system. If we have the cubed root of x, well now it is possible that I can have a negative radicand. If I were to take the cubed root of negative 8, the value is negative 2. So in this particular case, because we have an odd index as opposed to an even index, this would be number 2 if this is a square root, I would say that x just has to be an element of the real number system. It is okay to have a negative radicand if my index happens to be odd. So anytime we have a radical with an even index, index, so a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, etc., we know that we cannot have a negative radicand. We have to state the restriction on that variable if there is a variable within that radicand. So we're going to take the entire expression in the radicand. We know that it has to be greater than or equal to zero, and then if this is an inequality, we're going to solve for that variable to get our restriction. For example, I'm going to begin with this one here. So I can see that it is a square root because I have an even index of two, I know that I have to watch for a restriction. So I'm going to take this entire radicand and I'm going to set it so that it's greater than or equal to zero. And then I'm going to solve this inequality to isolate my variable. So I need to remove this plus four by subtracting four from each side, and when I do that, I end up with x must be greater than or equal to negative four, and we know x is an element of the real number system. So then you can try this. Let's say that x is equal to negative four. If I substitute a negative four back here, negative four plus four is zero, the square root of zero is zero. So that's okay, I can do that. Any number greater than negative 4 will also work. If you try a number that is not greater than negative 4, so let's say we put a negative 10 here, negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. I cannot square root negative 6. You can try on your calculator and you're going to get an error message. So we say that this is defined if we have a value for that variable that is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now, be careful. Don't just say x has to be greater than or equal to 0. If I put a 0 here, 0 plus 4 is Four, that's okay, but if I put a negative 1 in here, negative 1 plus 4, that's positive 3. I can take the square root of positive 3. So the restriction is not automatically greater than or equal to 0. You have to say what is the value on that variable that makes this entire expression greater than or equal to 0. Let's try this one next because it's similar to the first one. So it is a square root. I have an even index. I need to take this entire expression, the radicand, and I need to set that so it's greater than or equal to zero. And then I need to isolate this variable. So I'm going to remove that four by subtracting four from each side. And when I do that, I end up with that negative x must be greater than or equal to negative four. Now we have a negative one essentially times x. So I need to divide out that negative one from both sides. And then remember that anytime we divide or multiply by a negative, this inequality is going to flip. And you can see here, we have an inequality that says eight is greater than negative three. So eight on the number line is greater than negative three. If I were to multiply each of those sides by negative one, now I end up with negative eight and positive three. Well, now we have negative eight is now less than positive three. So we can see how that sign has now flipped.
So our restriction is that x must be less than or equal to 4. And again, try this out. So let's say we try a value for x that is less than or equal to 4. So I'm going to pick negative 1. If I take my original expression, I'm going to substitute in for x that negative 1 value. And then remember, if we have minus and negative, if you multiply those two signs together, that becomes a positive. 4 plus 1 is 5. The square root of 5, that is a real number. And you can even test it on your calculator. We get a real number. If I now try this out by choosing a value for x that is not less than or equal to 4, so let's say we try 10, I'm going to substitute a 10 in for that x, 4 minus 10 is negative 6, negative 6 is not a real number. Try this in your calculator, so if we go to the square root, negative is down there at the bottom, negative 6, you're going to see this says error, that is not a real answer, not a real number. So you can always choose a value, substitute it in there, and check to make sure that you have that inequality sign going the right way. And in this next one, we now have an odd index. This is a cube root, so it is possible to have a negative radicand. So in this case, we just have to say that x has to be an element of the real number system, and then any value, positive or negative, will work there. Now in each of these three examples that we've looked at so far, within the radicand, we are either adding or we are subtracting. Set the radicand greater than or equal to zero and solve for that variable if we have an even index. Now, as soon as we are multiplying, take a look at what exactly we're multiplying. So I can see that I have two variables. I have an x and I have a y. Now this y happens to have an even exponent. So no matter what I put in there for the base, even if I were to put in, for example, bracket negative two bracket to the power of four, that even exponent is gonna make that negative a positive. So there is no way I'm going to end up with a negative y value. No matter what that y is, this will always be a positive. My x variable has an odd exponent. So if I have, let's say, bracket negative two bracket to the power of five, well, that's gonna give me a negative value. And because we're multiplying, if I have positive times a negative times a positive, that whole thing will be negative. So I need to restrict that x so that this is going to be positive by saying that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. If x is zero, this whole thing is zero, and the square root of zero is zero. That's okay. If x is a positive number, then all of a sudden any positive number to the power of five, that's also going to give me a positive value times a positive value. And this y to the power of four will always always be positive. An even exponent will always give me a positive value here, even if y happens to be negative. So with the y, I just have to say that it has to be an element of the real number system, as does x, and that is my restriction. So anytime we see variables in the radicand, we have to be aware and say, okay, what are the restrictions on those variables? So we are restricting x to be greater than or equal to zero. That's going to give me ultimately a positive radicand. Sometimes you're also gonna see the directions instead of what are the restrictions on the variable. Sometimes it will also say, state the values for the variables for which this expression is defined. That's going to mean the same thing. And so there's a lot of things you have to pay attention to. So is it an odd index? Is it an even index? Are we adding or subtracting? In which case, just set the radicand greater than or equal to zero and then isolate the variable. If we're multiplying, you want to take a look at each piece and see what it is that we're multiplying. Knowing that this entire radicand has to be positive or zero, what restrictions do we potentially have on each of those variables?